What is up, people of the world? How are you doing this fine morning? We left off at infinite loops. Oh, where are my manners? <laughs> this is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com, and you are watching Code Academy Python tutorial number 21. Okay? Awesome. Now that we got out of the way, how are you doing? Hopefully you're doing awesome. We, back to where we were supposed to be, we are at part five, infinite loops, okay? We just finished talking about infinite loops. Infinite loops was this concept of horrible destruction and your code running forever. I showed you that my browser just crashed and that was terrible and it can cause problems in your computers too. Um, however, it's fun. You can do that to your friends, write the, uh, open up their terminals, write an infinite loop, and then watch them struggle. Um, but don't do that to maybe your really close, do that maybe to only your really close friends, not your acquaintances. So we found out what's wrong with infinite loops and what are some common errors that can cause it. For example, not paying attention to if this is a less than sign or greater than sign, right? Uh, not paying attention to whether you're incrementing it and dec decrementing it, that can cause a problem, right? For example, if you wanna go, if you wanna go less, 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 less to meet your condition, let's say you gotta get all the way down to zero and you're currently at 10, you wanna keep going and reaching zero, so you wanna decrement, right? Go down to zero. But if you get confused and you write a plus one there and you keep going 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on and so forth, now you're going in the wrong direction. You're going to run an infinite loop, okay? Let's click start next lesson. Break. So here we're going to talk about breaks. Breaks, generally avoid them, okay? My advice to you generally means bad logic. You didn't account for something can 99.99% of the times be avoided with the right logic. Um, however, it's a simpler way to let you break out of things, right? Um, it's sometimes useful if, if you really need to use it. Break is a one-line statement that means exit the current loop. So yeah, it just, uh, by, it just forces the loop to end without relying on some kind of logic. It just goes break, okay? So here, what we're saying, if I'm reading this code is, a while true, which means just run forever. There's nothing that can change this true, right? You, it's not a variable. You can't say, right? You can't go true. Is, true is equal to false. That won't work. It's kind of like saying five is equal to false. You can't assign to these things, um, and it'll just keep running forever. Okay. So, actually, let me check uh, if I'm what I'm saying is actually true. Yeah, so it's a keyword. You can't assign to a keyword, okay? Now, what happens in this loop? Well, we print count, count is zero the first time, then we increment count by one, uh, and then it, we check, hey, is count greater than or equal to 10? Meaning is count 10 or 10, 11, 12, 13, all up to infinity. It goes, no, that's not the case because count is zero the first time, right? So it's zero. and this condition evaluates to false, which is why this part of the loop, uh, but this part of the if condition does not run. If it did run, it'll exit the loop. Eventually, count kept, keeps getting incremented. We get it to it being nine. Eventually, count is 10. It prints out 10 to the screen. It says 10 is equal to 10 plus one, which makes count 11. Count is now 11. Uh, just, just recall that plus equals is the same thing as count plus one. Okay, that's how you should try to write it uh, for now. And here we're saying if 11 is greater than or equal to 10, this is a true statement. We break and we end the loop. Okay, that's what that means. So f first create a blah, blah, blah. The simplest way is shown. Using an if statement, you define the stopping condition. So here's our stopping condition. But do notice we still have a stopping condition that we're using here, right? And inside the if, you write break, meaning exit the loop. Break just means exit the loop. The difference here is that this loop is guaranteed to run at least once. 
So this is a way you can guarantee to run a loop at least once, kind of like uh, do while loop in Java or C, uh, C++. It's because remember, sometimes your loop might run, not run at all, right? Like if you had a condition while count is greater than 10, what if count was 100? Your loop will not run. So if you wanted your loop to run definitely at least one time for whatever reason, then this would be the way to go about it. I still don't like it. <laughs> you should try to avoid it. See what the break does. Feel free to mess around with it, but make sure you don't cause an infinite loop. Click save and submit code when you're ready to continue. Let's save and submit. So we figured out what it does. While slash else. So you can combine an else statement with the while loop. This is actually something for some reason I recently learned um, because it's pretty esoteric. At least I don't see it much being used. And I was solving a problem, a programming problem, and I saw that you can combine an else statement with a while loop. You can also combine an else statement with a for loop, just like um, you can combine else with the if statement. So how does how that works is if the while condition is ever false and you break out of the loop, then you just run the else part. Okay. So let's check it out and how it works. So we're gonna just run it a few times. Sometimes before you even read it, if you know, um, generally it's a good idea to try to walk through it before you run it but sometimes just run it and see what it does and then you can start to get an idea of it uh, all the print statements right these are python 2 print statements i'm converting it to python 3 so we can run it properly let's check it out print another print statement okay hopefully Right, lucky numbers, three numbers will be generated. If one of them is a five, you lose. One, three, six, none of them was a five. Two, four, two, we win. Two, one, two, six, we win. Four, one, four, we win. Jeez, it's never five, huh? Okay, sorry, so we finally lost. How does this work? Okay, so let's come down to the part where it says uh, while and then the else part. Okay, so if count is not less than three, right? If this statement ever evaluates to a false, right? Then what happens? What if count is currently not less than three, but three itself? That means the loop has already run how many times? Three times, right? I think they do that in German or something. Or when they ask for drinks or whatever, they, they go like this, like, get me three drinks. I don't know. They do that somewhere. Correct me. Um, I'm a little geographically challenged, so. Okay, so 0, 1, and 2 is effectively runs three times. So if the while uh, the count ever gets to 3 from 0, that means it's run three times already. And then it goes while three is less than three. Three is not less than three. That evaluates to a false. So then it sends you to the part where it says you win. Okay. So here's how it works. If we randomly generate a number between one and five, rand int, the function rand int right here, rand int, it does not include the endpoint. So it goes from the start up to, but not including the last part. For example, if I copy this code and I open up my Python terminal, doesn't matter, 2.7, Python 3.4, it does not matter. Um, and I just run this, right? So I import the random module that people wrote while getting their relationships destroyed and eating ramen noodle in hundreds and thousands of hours. You just stole their code by writing in one line. Oh, um, the other way random ran in does include it ran range does not include it okay so you'll never get a six if i do two here you'll never get a two you'll just get a one forever so ran int actually does include it what i should like learn my python right i don't understand it so again these are one of those things i'm glad these these things get caught on camera and i won't edit them out because this is so common Right, they like asked Einstein, how many feet are in a mile? And he goes, I don't know. And he says, 
I don't care because I don't want to use my brain to memorize a bunch of irrelevant facts. I want to use it to think. So here, I don't want to just memorize everything. Usually what programmers do is even programmers who program every day, you know, uh, and we do it as a job, will ev all, almost always go and look it up some documentation just to make sure that what they're doing, they're doing it correctly, okay? So these things, not everybody has them memorized. So that's why you refer to the documentation and just double check. So anyways, this will guess a number from one to six, including one and six. Then it gets printed out. If that number that was guessed was five, then it goes you lose and it breaks out of the loop and everything stops. If this, uh, and then after all of that, it just increments count by one, okay? So if, obviously this if condition hasn't run, if count ever gets incremented by one, obviously the if condition hasn't run because if it had, the loop would have been over and you would have never gotten to line 14. Then it goes again, generates a number. If it was not five, then it increments count by one. If it was not five, again, it'll increment count by one. Eventually when count is, first time count is zero, then it's one, then it's two. And if it hasn't met this if condition, and uh, it, it hasn't evaluated to true for the first three times of the loop, then you, this part evaluates to a false and you get to the else part of the loop and it says you win, okay? So let's go back and just run it. So we made sure we understood it, then just run it and go, okay, all right, we're done. Your own while, else. So now we write our own. Now you should be able to make a game similar to the one in the last exercise. The code from the last exercise is below. So you guess, guess, guess. If you don't guess correctly, you lose eventually after a certain number of times. Uh, and you do guess is equal to int raw input, which means that I take your input and I convert it to a string, right? So here, Right, instead if I did int, uh, it won't actually show you, but if I do, um, let's say user is equal to this, and I say five and I do type of user, so what type of, uh, what was the type of the answer? And if I just print out user, it'll show you that it's five, and it says the type is int, but if I don't wrap it in integer function, then what it shows you effectively is, uh, if I do user, it shows you that it's a string five, right? And if I do type of user, and it's a string type, not an integer type, which is why you need to wrap it into an integer function. Remember, raw input turns uh, user input into a string. We use int to make it a number again, okay? So that's essentially what's going on there. Use a while loop to get the user, to let the user keep guessing so long as guesses left is greater than zero. So while is greater than zero, keep running, which means that we're probably gonna be decrementing it every single time, right? Just to think about it. If guesses left is three, next time guesses left is two, then it's one, then it's zero, meet some kind of condition and then the loop should stop. Ask the user for their guess, just like the example above, if they guess correctly, print, break, da 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 da. Let's start coding this up. So we're gonna say while guesses left is greater than zero, um, and I'm just gonna write this part right here for now, left minus equal one. Sometimes I just write this part right away. So I know my loop will stop at some point because I do know I want to make it stop and I don't want an infinite loop. So I write my breaking condition right away and then I'll like most of the times write my code in between that. So I'll write my code, for example, now here because I know I'm safe and my loop will stop. Okay, so use a... All right, ask the user for their guess. So I'll say guess is equal to int raw input. And I will say, please enter your guess. This little space is nice. So user can type when the user is about to type, their cursor is blinking where my cursor is right now. But if I didn't have this space, their cursor would be where my cursor is right now. That would look weird. I also put the colon here because sometimes people will do this. And it's weird when it says, please enter your guess, end of sentence, and you're typing right there. It's a little confusing. So colon makes more sense. 
it's a better user interface. Two parentheses to close off the raw input function parentheses, and then uh, the second parentheses to close off the integer int function parentheses, okay? If they guess correctly, print new in, okay? So if guess is equal equal to uh, the random number that was generated, then print you win, okay? And then break out of the loop. Okay, else print you lose. Okay, so this part, what happens, it keeps running and then once the the while condition evaluates to a, once the while condition evaluates to a false, it prints out this part. Let's step through the code line by line. Guess is this. So the user gets to type in something. Once that user types in something, it goes, hey, uh, let me see if your guess matched the num uh, random number that I picked from one to 10 inclusive. So let's say the random number was five. So it goes, let's see, if you put in three, is that equal to five? Nope. So it does not break out of the loop and it also does not say you win. So we keep going. You get to guess again and um, it decrements guesses left by one. So guesses left initially was three, then the next time will be two. It goes here, asks for the user input. You put in a guess. It checks if your guess was equal to the random number, which again was probably five, right? Uh, we're not changing random number every time. We picked it to be five initially and it stays as five the entire time. The only thing that's changing is guesses. Now let's say you guessed four. So this part evaluates to false. So it does not run the, that block here. It goes to line 13. Decrements guesses left by one. So now guesses left uh, goes from two to one. Eventually when guesses left is zero, zero is not gr strictly greater than zero. That evaluates to a false, which means we go to the else part and uh, you know, none of this block of code runs. We go to the else part and it just says you lose. Okay, so that is it for that. Let's check it out. Uh, please enter your guess. We'll say three. Oh, look at that. I guessed correctly the first time. So the random number was actually three. I had a one out of 10 chance, or sorry. One, two, three. One, two, three, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna count it. I do know it's actually 10. So I had a one out of 10 chance to guess it right, and I did. All right, now for loops. So we just ended the section on while loops. That's great. So I think a perfect thing to do here is actually just end this video because we've completed a while loop section this way you get to practice some while loops in the comments below. You can also put some while loops that you have made, like actually put them down there and I'll comment and I'll tell you if they're wrong or if they're right or if they're cool. And they'll also give other people an idea of what to do, okay? That way you guys can collaborate right here. And if you, um, yeah, so we're gonna continue from the next one. So this is it, this is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, make sure to subscribe so you can keep getting these amazing videos. Other than that, I will see you in the next video, Codecademy Python tutorial number 22.